Now, ultimately, music is about emotion. So I'm going to talk about circuitry and software. What we have here is the Jazari Meganome controller, which is built around an Arduino Mega and loosely inspired by the famous Monom controller. The control surface consists of 84 square illuminated arcade buttons with extra light action, complemented by a number of continuous control sensors, including an XY joystick, two ebony pressure sensors, a proximity sensor, and two endless LED encoders. The case is made from solid 3 quarter inch purple heart and accented with curly maple. The whole box weighs in around 25 pounds, and if we open up the hood, you can see inside is an Arduino Mega and a number of TLC 5940 LED uh, driver chips and some shift registers to sense button presses. The Meganome has two modes, one for controlling drum machines and one for controlling software synths. In drum machine mode, each column represents a drum hit and each row corresponds to a quantized rhythmic value. Holding down a button results in repeated drum hits uh, represented by the column at the rhythmic value of the row. So, if I find the kick drum column and go to the quarter note row, and I hold down that button, I get quarter notes in the kick drum. And I can add eighth notes to that in the hi-hat by holding down the button in the hi-hat column at the row for eighth notes. Or I could add sixteenth notes or 32nd notes, and even convert those to triplets. Throw that all together, and you can play multiple drums at once, and do some rhythmic figuration that would be very difficult for uh, a human drummer. In synth control mode, the button grid represents pitch space with the chromatic scale along rows and octaves along columns. Uh, buttons that belong to the key of the track that I'm playing in light up so I can keep track of what I'm playing and where I am in the key. With pitch space laid out on a two-dimensional grid, certain chord voicings and melodic motion that would be difficult on the keyboard become easy to handle and vice versa. So octave jumps are very easy. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, it's very difficult to uh, voice triads. You know, that's very easy on the piano because they lay under the hand nicely. But here you really need two hands to play a triad. So there are trade-offs, but it's, it's been interesting to sort of learn what's idiomatic um, on this particular controller with synthesis. Between the controller and the drum machines is software written in Max MSP and Java that handles all the sequencing, synthesis, and effects. I like to put a lot of effects on the drums, especially frequency shifting, delay, down sampling, and bad pitch shifting. Why robots? Why robots? I mean, robots are expensive to build, time consuming to make, and uh, hard to move in and out of gigs. You know, drummers and guitar players and whatever, they, like, they can get themselves in and out of a club. So it is more work, but um, what you get out of using robots, or you know, these, I call them robots, you know, electromechanical furniture that plays drums, you get the control of, that you have with software, so you can do all the sequencing that you have with software and all the effects you can do inside the box in, in a computer in a program like Ableton. But you have the tactile feeling of real acoustic drums. You have this sort of infinite micro variation of each drum hit, because no two drum hits are the same. And when you run something that's always slightly different through effects processors, the uh, the output has a certain tactile quality that's just its unlike using samples. So it's its own thing. And the other advantage of playing with robots is that it's very low drama. You know, like, these guys are always on time for rehearsal. Uh, we don't fight over creative direction or women, which is a good thing because these guys are machines. <laughs> <laughs> 